Hey everybody, Ashley Page here. Thank you for joining us on our educational vlog today. Our topic is the five major supply chain issues that we have that are not China. As you've seen in a lot of the popular press, there's been so much discussion of, with repatriating industries and supply chains from China after what we've gone through with the virus. And obviously that is going to continue to be a large topic of conversation. But we want to let you know that there are five major items that are not China that are also issues with the supply chain post COVID-19 we have to solve. Here are the five. Number one, and it's obvious, consumer demands off. You know, it is a supply chain and supply meets demand. So as our consumer demand comes back on in somewhat of a start and stop way, uh, that is not as predictable as it has been in the past. Supply chains are gonna have to deal with that. They're not going to be as smooth as they have been. That's number one. Number two, it's an issue if you remember, most supply chains are what are called just-in-time, or JIT for short. The just-in-time inventory system was developed uh, by Japanese automakers in the 1970s and has become the dominant supply chain type of science. What's interesting and just in time, as the name suggests, you're trying to get the product that you produce to another industry uh, to that plant right exactly when they need it. Why do you do that? You're trying to keep your inventory down and your inventory cost down. So as we go back in to restart the supply chain, remember we've got a just-in-time system across the world that is not very well set up to deal with a large inventory push. There has not been a lot of, um, if you will, investment made in a lot of equipment to really push the supply chain hard. So we're very used to a model that keeps very little inventory around, so we're going to have to adjust to that. That's number two. Number three is, is if you look at all transportation, and we're primarily saying trucking, rail, and air, there's about a six to eight week imbalance in it. Well, that makes sense. You know, like we were saying before, the supply chains are not real smooth right now. It's kind of start and stop, start and stop. Obviously, we've had to retask that and focus is on medical, and a lot of it is aimed there now. So once we get past the coronavirus, we're going to have to somewhat detune ourselves from sort of the emergency transportation model we've had back to a normal one. And once you see the demand come back, it's going to take about six to eight weeks to have this truck scheduled for this normal run, or this rail freight scheduled for this normal run, or this air freight scheduled for this normal run. So that's number three. But let's talk about the international part. That's number four. China notwithstanding, you have a lot of other cross-border issues. You know, we buy and sell with Mexico, we buy and sell with Canada, we buy and sell with Europe, we buy and sell with Australia. All of those supply chains that are international and still offshoring, uh, we're gonna have to restart those too in the way that all those are done. You know, those, those countries have different regulations. We have different tariff structures in place, all of that right now. The, the main thing we're going to have an issue with is, and this is number five, almost all industries that are selling you a final product have got layers of distribution underneath them. It is very rare that you bring in raw materials, make all of it in one plant and ship it to the consumer. Usually you'll have a subcomponent, another subcomponent, another subcomponent. That's what's called uh, the layering of the supply chain. So that's number five. In the layer of the supply chain, most industries have anywhere from two to four layers. So when you have to turn this back on, it's not just what you're doing in your own plant. You've got to go back and renegotiate with, in most cases, two to four suppliers. In some cases, whether it's automotive or medical or aerospace, your supply chain can be as many as seven companies deep 
on high value add. So when you look at that, that's a lot to go back through and restart. You just don't turn your own machinery back on. So uh, hopefully that is interesting to you. Uh, it was to us. Those are your top five reasons of restarting the supply chain where we're going to have uh, difficulty somewhat um, post-coronavirus that are not China. Uh, as always, we love to hear from you, either just calling the office by all social media. If you have extra questions on this topic, please feel free to call myself, uh, Greg Powell, or anyone on the portfolio team. Uh, we love your questions. We love the, doing these for you, and we hope you have a great rest of the week. Thanks.